Hello, my name is Anne Edwards, and I am your, your instructor for discovering the creative process course. If you look on canvas, you will see each week is very clearly itemized with all that you will need in order to do your assignments. The first week is about drawing. The next presentation, you will see how drawing has been used when discovering the creative process by a number of different artists. Drawing is an instinctive desire to leave a mark, to show other societies yet to come what life was like and how life was led, and what we can look like and the world in which we live. The following images will show the range of materials used when making drawings, and the images shown show the ways in which the creative process has changed throughout time. The first drawing, a prehistoric drawings and paintings found in caves throughout the world, and they were made using natural materials from earth, plants, flowers, rocks, such as red and yellow ochre. All these things were ground into powder, mixed with water, and used to draw on the walls. From these paintings and drawings, we learn what the world was like for prehistoric societies. Perhaps the most famous artist in the world, Leonardo da Vinci. This drawing here was done with red chalk, and this study shows us what people looked like in the 15th century. Leonardo also is famous for his sketchbooks, and it would be advisable for you all to keep a sketchbook throughout this whole course. These are detailed drawings of machinery and even helicopters, which in centuries later would be produced and made and benefit mankind. The most famous drawing in the world, pen and ink. Not only is this drawing very accomplished, it's also intriguing. It is indicating that man has two sides to his character. One fits into the square world we have, which we have created on Earth, and the other side represents the circle, indicating his spiritual needs, the heaven and his faith. Both are necessary for well-being. Hence, this drawing is often to be found in doctor surgeries, health clubs and spas. Another very soft, lyrical, charcoal drawing by Veronese. Francisco Barbieri. Pen and ink, much freer in execution. Narrative painting at the time often featured naked mythological characters and artists made studies of this kind for their painting. Piranesi is famous for his imaginary prison drawing. These pen, ink and wash studies are very contemporary and could have been done today, a timeless group of drawings. If you're interested in these drawings, Google them. He produced quite a few. Udon. This is a very academic drawing of a classically posed model, indicating the fashion of the time for accuracy with no unnecessary marks or expressive drawing techniques. This drawing is quite famous because of the expression of the sitter, which is one of defiance. And the portrait is intriguing and makes us want to know more about her. Paul Gauguin, chalk pastels. Gauguin lived in Martinique and Polynesia at different stages of his life and his work depicts his passion for these locations, the societies living there, and his life within these societies. Sura is for a lover of the theatre and the circus. 
So his work very often depicts this. This is chalk and ink on paper. And he was famous for a technique called pointillist technique, which is very small dots, which make up an image. Matisse is the master of economy, the master of line, which shows us all we need to know about this subject, just a few line strokes. We are given a great deal of information from what are in fact very few lines, and we feel a connection to this woman, and we become part of her story. Rauschenberg, from this series, 34 illustrations of Dante's Inferno, Rauschenberg's work on paper often was made by transfer printing imagery from magazines or newspapers onto the paper and then drawing over these. The images depicted social and popular culture at the time. And in this case, these were used to portray a historical theme. Agnes Martin, a very influential artist known for her systems drawing, where she repeated the same image over and over again. She repeated symbols and lines and created soporific, calm images. Another example. And this piece, which is just over six feet square, is a very impressive painting made using gold leaf and gesso. At its heart is beauty and love evident in the use of the expensive materials. Andy Warhol, perhaps more famous for his silk screen prints, was a very accomplished draftsman, very famous figure in the art world of the 60s. He celebrated throwaway society, cultural observations, and what we might understand today as artistic activism, which defines what Warhol celebrated in his work. You see examples there of money, dollar bills, Campbell soup can, all, all drawn in a really expressive way, just using pencil. Just for John, numbered letters and symbols, expressively portrayed using multi-layered expressive marks, this is what defines Jasper John. Klaus Oldenburg, this drawing, pencil and colored pencil. He is known for his huge pop art sculptures of everyday objects. The drawing of Sh Shuttlecock was a study for such a sculpture, which was eventually, uh, which was eventually made. The drawing is skillful, but it's playful, indicating the nature of the Arctic sculptures, which were an echo of the mindset of the 60s generation. Side one we use the gouache, wax, crayon, pencil, ink, and other materials. And hopefully, when you begin to do your own work, you will experiment with a range of materials such as these. He also uses ballpoint pen and pencil. This is a very interesting drawing created by the tires of a motorbike, which was, which was ridden to create these circles on the earth. Christos Valley Curtain, mixed media, in order to raise funds for his enormous land art project, this is a curtain that stretches across a valley. He made detailed drawings of his proposals, which he sold. And as he was a well-known and well-respected artist, these drawings sold for considerable sums and went a long way to him realizing his very ambitious project. Jim Dine, very expressive pencil mark. His desire to achieve absolute accuracy in his work was something he was particularly known for. And he has a collection of drawings of different tools. Frank Auerbach continually erasing and redrawing over the partial erased image. He spent years making some of his drawings, 
in a quest for accuracy. And this overlay of marks brings history to the drawing and indicates movement and personality. Anthony Gormley uses chicory, coffee, blood, linseed oil, and more conventional drawing materials to make his drawings. His work is about the human body, inside and outside, and we, we can relate to that on some level. Again, study his work. It might be something that inspires you. Claude Heath, Ben Nevis, colour pencil and pen. This artist uses automatic drawing and blind drawing to express his concept. On first glance, Tara Walker's work looks like fairy story illustrations. However, as the public are drawn into the images, they discover that it's actually about slavery and how this has resonated through Black society. She continues to explore race, gender, and identity within her work. Julie Maruti, 2000, a personal language with evidence of calligraphy, three swooshes of marks forming a map of imaginary time and space. The rich kaleidoscope of marks evidences a personal language of our time. She creates depth within her work. These deep, dark, gestural marks hover above the surface. This particular artist is extremely successful. Peter Joy, digital drawing, something that is very popular at the moment, but he manages to infuse within it atmosphere, pathos, very memorable drawings, and they're all made for a reason. It's not the process all the materials used that make a good drawing. It's the concept and the ideas behind it. Paul Noble's pencil drawing, urban life, confusion, strange imaginary land or interest this artist. This work is very skillful and delicately executed, showing wide ranging pencil mark making. Now below, it's the work of students who've been inspired by the work of the past. So the 21st century students looked at Leonardo da Vinci's 15th century work. The desire to invent and discover by drawing on our experiences has continued through the activity of drawing over the centuries. You can see the structures and the mechanism that's been drawn in Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci's work is in some way echoed here, which with this drawing, which is very structural, at, at times quite repetitive. However, this student has used very different materials, but it has the same kind of sensibility that this, these drawings have. Student work here. This has a lot of dynamic opportunities because of this diagonal here and this one has a very dynamic upward sweep up and down <coughs> life drawing has for centuries been the first experience of becoming an artist and that activity has always drawn on the past for inspiration the more here where you can see the very um dark and light shadows and highlights were being repeated on these drawings as well. An appreciation of the possibilities of a range of art making procedure when making a drawing can be in some part attributed to Cy Twombly. So the student here had been looking at Cy Twombly's work, being inspired by him, yet making work of originality is what's important. And she has achieved that in this drawing. Rauschenberg, he did transfer print, as we mentioned before, and these are a similar sort of print, monoprinting. But the marks here are very reminiscent of what's happening here. And the empty space is happening in this piece of work as well. 
The artist is to tailor to or hold and use objects which are to them important or significant. The compositions of the two drawings below have some similarity, as does the mark making. But each drawing is definitely of its time of its time. The playfulness and energy of Oldenburg has been translated in a contemporary manner in this student's work. This doll-like subject matter here has been has inspired this work here, which is a doll, an action man doll. But you can see the mark, the make, the playfulness. It's all echoed in this, this work. Anthony Gormley again, mixed media. And this student here has used mixed media and again included a figurative element in a very different way. More disturbing and sinister, perhaps. Similarly with this one. As I said, each week you will be given an assignment and the assignment for week one is process research. Before you do any artwork of your own, you need to know the processes that are available for you to use. So here is the assignment, process research, drawing and painting. And here you'll see you have to find out about various processes, techniques, materials and methods used by visual artists to describe the processes they have used. So if you look through these, you will see films that you can watch, not very long, very quite short. And this will help you when you produce your document about drawing and painting. You will also be able to open some of these links, the history of painting media, the history of painting. And then it will be a good idea to produce drawing mark making exercises, painting mark making exercises in your, in your sketchbook maybe, and photograph them and put them on your document. So you've got to be experimenting with materials and making marks, but not making a picture or an image. Each week, you will see examples of the work of other students that you can open. I suggest you go all through the weeks and keep opening different projects to see what people have done. So this project here, drawing and painting, you can see she's discovered different images that interest her. And in her own words, she's written about them. It's not a great deal, which has gone through to the 20th century. Each week, as you progress through the course, you'll see the next course, the next week, assignment two is about finding out about printmaking and mixed media. And again, there's films for you to watch and processes for you to learn when you open the um, the, the, the link here. And then you go on to research photography and video. That's week three. It's still assignment one. And all of that work from the three weeks will go together on one document, be uploaded for grading. At this point here, you'll be introduced to the project. And the project is about identity. We open here, you'll see identity research. The previous assignments on what to come will be discussed in weeks four and five, and the practical project will be introduced. And examples of other students' work will be shown in connection with research undertaken about artist work. Assignment two provides links and videos to the artists mentioned, who you will be researching during the next two weeks. So you have to produce for your project over the next 10 weeks, what identity means to you. Here are some of, here is the assignment and a list of artists here for you to study.
click on the assignment, you see links to Jenny Savile and short film to other artists. And you'll produce quite a few images of what these artists have produced and some text. But this is a visual art course, so we're not expecting essays of any length. It's more your observations and how you feel these artists are discovering identity within their work. So I encourage you to open any of the examples of, of uh, other students' work that you see. And if you want to go further into the course and keep on opening the work that people have done, then this is this is a, a, a good idea and it will help you when the time comes with your work. The structure of the course will be mainly through one-to-one -one tutorials, which I will undertake on a regular basis. So I get to know you and get to know the kind of work you're making and help you in your creative journey. <laughs>